I just want to preface this video with a very exciting announcement. Um, for those of you who follow me and know me and follow my Instagram and whatnot, and also I made an announcement last around this time last year that I had my big cartel shop open to purchase prints of my artwork. But then when I moved, I closed it down because I wasn't sure how it was going to work out with everything. But it turns out it can work out perfect. Basically what I'm trying to say is sarahminix.bigcartel.com is back open for business baby around the perfect time of year, the holidays. So if you want to get yourself a little gift for Christmas or you have a friend who fucks with my work, your support would mean so much to me. Making profit off of my artwork is really really rewarding and very important because I put so much time and effort into my paintings and I just want to share them with the world. So prints are available for purchase for $12. Um, the link will be in the description so please make sure to go check it out. I'm so excited. Anyways, on with the video. I've got some serious tea for you today. I know that doing Ouija boards are bad. I know that you shouldn't fuck with Ouija boards. But honestly, I've been so curious about it ever since I moved here. And for those of you who have not seen my first video talking about all the paranormal and scary stuff that's happened to me since I've moved here, I highly recommend you check it out right now. I'll put the link right in the description so you can watch it and kind of like know more about what I've experienced here. Um, and today I have a couple stories for you, so you know, brew your tea, let's get it going. Okay, so I have a couple of stories for you guys today. One of them deals with an experience I had doing Ouija board with a few of my friends literally last night. But first I'm gonna share a story that someone actually sent me, someone who lives in my building. Her name is Emma and she sent me a message on Facebook telling me about some of the scary stuff she's experienced since moving here. Like she has experienced some wild, wild, wild things. First of all, I just wanna say thank you so much to Emma for allowing me to share her stories with you guys. Definitely crazier than what I experienced in my first video. Like, wow, okay, let's just, without further ado. Let's get into it. Um, oh my gosh. So she sent me a message and said, Hey, I live at Grey Nuns and I saw your post about the paranormal stuff and I'm not kidding, the craziest shit has happened to me. And I said, sis, spill that tea. She warned me, she's like, it's gonna take a while. And I'm like, yeah, I got time. And I woke up the next day to 23 message notifications from her and I knew she had some serious stuff to tell me. I also apologize in advance if my voice is like a little bit rough around the edges. Um, I've been sick, I'm getting sick, I don't know, but it hurts, so. I didn't want to wait though to make this video because I'm so excited to share. Okay, shit, so. The first bit of creepy shit was more of a Montreal haunted type of thing, not Grey Nuns. Basically my first week here I had zero friends and me being my literal dumb self thought like, you know it would be spontaneous to go hike up Mont Royal. It's so weird because I actually did this same thing my first week here and because I'm located in such a great part of Montreal, like I just thought like I, I had to go like exploring. And the first week I did the same thing and I almost went to the lake but it was really late at night and it was completely dark and I'm like I'm not gonna be that bitch who goes into a forest in a new city like unknown area like at night. I can be stupid and crazy sometimes but like not that level. Anyways let's continue on with the story. This was at about 6 p.m. I had never gone up before and my battery was at a solid 27%. So I'm going up and I didn't know that there was a staircase like five steps to my right. Instead I followed my maps and went left. It brought me to the lake there, and I was like, you know what, I'll stop here and just go back. So I stop and I'm taking pics and it's all good, then out of nowhere, two girls come and ask if I can take their pic, and I'm like, yeah, I'm all for it. I take the picture and we start talking, and I told them how I wanted to find the lookout. They were from McGill, and were like, oh my god, we can show you. So I'm like, wow, what nice people. Anyways, they show me the way, I took some pics, and I said goodbye. Now, it's starting to get dark, and I'm trying to remember how the hell I got to this lookout. Long story short, my battery dies, so I just keep walking, but then it got pitch black, so I was like, okay, I can either A, go down the dark, unlit path I think I came, or B, go down the lit staircase that I don't know where it leads to. My bitch ass chose the staircase, and I ended up on a street that I did not recognize, of course. So I keep walking straight, just hoping I run, run into someone who I could ask for directions, and there's literally no one. I keep walking and end up at the hospital, and at the time I didn't know it was like super close because she had just moved here and didn't know the area that well. I keep walking and end up at the hospital, and I'm like, hey, I'll go in there and see if there's a charger, a phone, or someone who can help me. So I'm heading into the ER, and you know how there's two sets of doors, like the sliding doors when you walk in? Well, there was this sweet little nurse standing all alone. So I asked how the fuck I get back. She's like, oh, don't you worry, I live near there, I can walk you back. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Montreal just has the sweetest people. Look at all these people helping me find my way, you know? So she's walking me back and she's asking me how my life is going and how I'm adjusting, etc, etc. 
and I just keep thanking her because holy sweetness and she never said like no problem she was always just like oh I'm your guardian angel for tonight so we get to Maisonneuve and Guy and I'm like okay I know my way thank you so so much I'm just gonna use fake names out of respect in the story as well so like these are not the real names and she's like anytime what's your name I'm Emma what's yours and she's like Alice and I got goosebumps. And then she says she'll see me soon. And then I just went back to Grey Nuns and cried. Because after collecting everything that happened, the two girls who helped show me the lookout were Christine and Brooke. And she had a friend that she was really close with who unfortunately passed away um, pretty recently. And his name was Christian Brooks. So Christine and Brooke, Christian Brooks. like, And the woman who told Emma that she was her guardian angel and was gonna see her soon was Alice, the name of her aunt who actually passed away as well and she was very close with. The woman that helped her get to safety and find her way back was her guardian angel, also the same name as her relative who she was very close with. And then those two girls that helped her like find her way in the forest. It's so crazy when the universe seems to be on our side and sends us these signs and these messages of like safety and comfort and help and the idea of having that guardian angel be someone that you love so much when you knew them in this lifetime in their physical forms like it's just crazy to think or like who's watching over you but let's uh, move on to her next story so the other two things were in her dorm basically i have my hair straightener and curler connected to a power bar and i turn that off instead of constantly plugging and unplugging them days go on and i start noticing the light on my hair curler would just randomly be blinking meaning it was turned on so at first I'm like, huh, I must have accidentally turned it on and left it on. But then for days I just wouldn't curl my hair or even go near my sink. I'd be at my desk, look over, and the fucking light would be blinking. So I think I'm going crazy. So I start taking a photo to make sure it's off before I leave my room. And I come back and the light will be blinking when I get back. So I'm like, no, nah, -uh, no way. I'm turning off the power bar too now. And she goes, I shit you not, I came back one day and somehow, and I honestly have no clue, the power bar and the hair curler would have had to be turned on because she gets back and the damn light was blinking. <laughs> so now my hair curler is locked away under my sink and I haven't used it in a month since. I've had things like that happen where things will turn on or like get misplaced somehow and honestly I think it's just like the playful um, spirits of the kids who unfortunately passed away here. That's what I believe at least is they but yeah, I feel like the, a lot of the spirits here are very playful because they were so young when they passed. Um, and speaking of that, let's get on to the next story. This one's probably like the creepiest, like the eeriest. Like the first one was beautiful, second one was just mischievous. But this story gave me the chills. Like, And this last thing was the last fucking straw for me in this building. Basically my neighbor is in drama, so whenever she runs lines or something I might hear her and she's warned me before like, oh hey, if you hear me talking to myself, I'm just rehearsing. So I usually don't get sketched out if I hear little noises, voices, etc. Because I figure it's her. Well, I randomly woke up at exactly 2.30 a.m., which literally never happens to me. And I hear this child singing, that, that song in a creepy child's voice. So I'm like, K, what the fuck? And I message my neighbor and she doesn't answer till the next day. Long story short, and she sends me this chat. She sends this October 21st, 2.31 a.m. Hey, are you practicing right now? Like the you are my sunshine, but in a kid's voice? I don't care if you are, I just wanna make sure I'm not hearing some child ghost, haha. <laughs> and her neighbor responds back the next day at like around noon and she says, LOL, nope, I was not. And she says, wait, what? And she goes, we were watching TV. And like all the TVs are in the common room, so like she wasn't even in her room. There's no TVs in our room, so like she wasn't even awake. I think they were watching TV like earlier that night anyways. Because she goes, I'm not kidding, I heard it so perfectly. And you guys, <laughs> she says, the reason it scared the fuck out of me was because I have a photo album with those exact lyrics that this demon child was singing. Like, right on her bedside table, she has a photo album with those You Are My Sunshine lyrics. <sighs> Hello, police? Thank you so much, Emma, again, for letting me share those stories. Let me know what you guys think of those stories. Knock on wood, like, that I won't hear any child ghosts singing in the night, please. Oh my gosh. Okay, now. Okay, y'all, now we're gonna get onto the topic of the Ouija board that we did last night. Okay, so... 
Luca Avellino. You guys know him. You guys love him. He's been my best friend for years and a lot of you guys ask like, are you guys still friends? Because you never see us together. It's because he still lives in Toronto and I live all the way in Montreal and I haven't seen him in a long ass time. So he came on the weekend. It was delicious, amazing, beautiful, wonderful, talented. Also my friends Emma, Dana, and Carol, they all came and it was... Uh, it was a wonderful time. And the first time they visited my building and came to my room and stuff, I really wanted to like tell them all about the creepy stuff that's been happening here and like show them the crypt downstairs. We'll show them all like the e creepy, eerie places in this building. It's always a guest favorite. So the first night they came over, Friday night, we were talking about all this creepy stuff. And my friend Dana tells me about how she's done so many Ouija board sessions before. Um, she's done them like at her cottage and like up north. She's channeled like a dead relative who predicted something before it happened and warned her about something and sent her a message. Like she's experienced some crazy stuff doing Ouija boards. Thing is though, she's also done her research. So it's really highly warned against to just go around playing around with a Ouija board. But um, Dana actually really knows a lot about like what's okay to do and what's not and how to properly close it off and make sure that we have no like demons left behind. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know this, our experience was very beautiful. There was a very comforting energy surrounding it and we honestly felt very protected. One thing we did as well was I burned some sage and I put it around us all as kind of like a protective field around our energy. We did not allow any bad spirits into our realm. And honestly, we didn't get any bad spirits. So we started out just down my hall here, um, the chapel, like the study hall, and we channeled something pretty quickly. And also, we were all pretty terrified. This is the first time I've ever done this. Like, I never wanted to mess around with Ouija boards because uh, just, it's not a game to be played. Like, it's to be taken very seriously. Luckily, Dana knew a lot about, like, what was okay to do and what wasn't. She laid down a lot of really important rules. So I really trusted it this time, and I really wanted to communicate with something from the other side. And y'all, we did, like... So we started off in that one hallway on the third floor, then we went up to the fourth floor for a bit because that's where the children passed away in the fire. So we thought we could channel like a child's uh, spirit. And I think we did because we asked it how old it was. And a few different times we got the answer zero. And unfortunately, some of the kids who did pass away in this fire were uh, only a few months old. So I feel like that could be a very possible answer and anytime we asked it a question it spelled out answers that didn't and then it started going a b c a b c a b c so could potentially be a very young child i'm not sure or we just channeled something that was unclear or not of this earth just kind of like a frequency or like a spirit in the air it wasn't until we got to our third location where we really really got some strong results and it's very explainable because we actually found a secret hallway right in front of the chapel and underneath that directly underneath where we were sitting it was the crypt where the uh, nuns here are buried and are lying to rest so we thought that would be the perfect place throughout the whole night we had not felt the planchette move so quickly and answer the questions so quickly but also with such a strong force like it was actually we asked if they were a nun if they were a sister here back in the day they said yes we asked if they lived here they said yes we also asked for a name and it kept spelling out p-e-y like pay and i'm not sure if that could be Peyton or just simply initials we did ask if it was their initials and she did say yes but when we asked if she worked here it was a very very hesitant slow move halfway to yes the weird part of this is when we would get a certain answer we all seemed to know what it meant. Although it was a very open-ended answer or a very general answer or just random letters or even just the way the planchette moved, we all seemed to know and have an idea of what Pei was communicating to us. We all kind of had the idea of like maybe worked here isn't the right phrasing because um, the sisters were women who dedicated their lives to God and I think it must not have felt like work. That's kind of what we picked up on that. We figured it wasn't worked she served, she was a woman of God, so I don't know, probably didn't feel like work, it was just her life, you know? And we all seemed to understand that. And we also asked her age when she passed, it was 57, which does make sense because a lot of these women didn't grow to be too old due to a sickness or an illness. And actually the reason that the nuns are still buried in my building and they haven't been dug up yet is because um, a lot of these women died from diseases at a fairly young age, so if you dig it up, you release the sickness into the air and it's just really... Um, we asked when she started working here, and she said 1917. Um, and actually, February 1918, 
the top floor of this building um, burned down. The stories, the articles I read aloud, all the facts are in my first video, so it's in the description like I said. So please watch that if you want to know. We asked if she loved playing with the children, she said yes, and whenever we asked if she had a message for us, she would just keep saying P-E-Y, P-E-Y. We asked how long she was a sister for, she said 24, 25, 20 something years. Um, and we asked how old she was when she joined, and it was, she said 30 something. Um, so like the math adds up. The energy in the planchette as she was communicating to us was just so strong and like so unexplainable. It was really crazy. One thing that Luke asked her, which was a very interesting question, but I feel like it was a bit too much to be communicated um, in this context and it's a really big question to ask. Luke asked if like religion was worth it in the end, if, it, if believing in God and staying true to God um, was worth it in the end now being on the other side, and uh, we didn't get any movement at all from the planchette. And I just feel like it was a really heavy question, may not have communicated as easily as some of the other questions. I also asked her about Jean-Baptiste Goyer, who I talk about in my first video, and um, he was the one who murdered his neighbor and was publicly tortured, killed, and some say he's buried under the cross right at the corner of the street here. And there's some rumors that he's buried underneath there and some students and some people that I know actually have seen the shadow figure of him. So I asked uh, Pei if he was buried at the corner and she said yes. But I don't know, I don't know if that's true or not, I don't know if she gave me the wrong answer, but, but she had given us so much accurate information already. Like. I don't know, the idea of that just gives me the chills a bit, but one thing we did notice that was quite different from the other spirits that we channeled throughout that night was Pei's energy was very, very comforting and protective, and we even asked her, are we safe in this building? Are we safe from the spirits that reside in this building? And she said, yes, we are. So that really brought us all this huge sense of comfort. We all felt it at the same time. Um, so it was a very beautiful experience, and, and we all kind of just started crying afterwards because the presence was so strong and we literally talked to a nun for so long. One thing that I've heard another Storytime YouTuber say before is that um, when they're dealing with anything spiritual of a presence or a ghost or like a demon or something, anything of that sort, one symptom that you have been in a paranormal situation is if your sense of time is completely thrown off. We drew the Ouija board. Oh, did I just touch a spider? We started doing this at like 9 p.m. and our two friends Sabrina and Emma decided that they wanted nothing to do with it, which like g good for them. Like honestly, like understandable. So they, they went they went to somebody else's room and we thought like we wouldn't obviously have done it for too long if we knew they were waiting for us and we also had a whole night planned ahead of us so like we said we would do it really quick before we pre-gamed. Also we did do this fully sober and everything because you can't actually properly channel a spirit or you can get kind of or you kind of lose your sense of control with it if you're drunk. So you can't be drinking, you can't be on anything of any kind. So we were very sober. One thing I like to pride myself in as a YouTuber is not having technical difficulties. Honestly, it does not take that much technical knowledge to be a YouTuber, but for some reason in this one particular video, I had so many interruptions. I don't know why I'm clapping so much. Through importing my files, I lost so many clips. As you just saw in the video, there were so many random interruptions. Now I'm not saying it's the ghosts. But I'm saying it's the ghost. But the whole ending to this video, I for sure recorded it and it disappeared off the memory card. So uh, that was pretty much the story. Um, thank you guys for listening. I hope you believe me. Just so you know, we closed the board. We said bye demons. We said goodbye and we cut up the board and it's done. And it's been about two weeks since I filmed that video. And honestly, my life is fine. I haven't experienced any further hauntings than the normal. I think that Ouija board was a success and I hope you guys enjoyed the story and I hope you guys enjoyed Emma's stories. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel because I'll be putting out so many more videos. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm home, baby. I'm home, I'm back in my hometown. I moved back for the winter break. So that's super exciting and there's gonna be lots of videos to come. So stay tuned. Bye guys.